Tonight, there are some new twists and turns in the case of a woman from Long Island who disappeared while on a road trip. Gabby Petito from Blue Point hasn't been heard from since the last week of August. Her family believes she might be over 2,100 miles away in Wyoming. Today, neighbors of her fiance, Brian Laundrie, revealed police found the van she was traveling in at his home in Northport, Florida. No sign of Gabby, though, and tonight, the fiance is refusing to cooperate with police. Justin Shecker from our NBC station in Tampa is at the home tonight with the emotional plea from Gabby's father. Northport police say the search for 22 year old Gabby Petita remains a missing persons case. At this time, they have no evidence a crime occurred. The boyfriend's family referred police to their attorney. And I think most people would think that uh, this individual might have some details as far as last time he saw her, the last whereabouts. Um, yeah, I think it has not been helpful that we have not been able to talk to him. Petito had been living with her boyfriend, Brian Laundrie, at his parents' home in southwest Florida. That's where Northport police say on Saturday night they recovered the 2012 white Ford van from the couple's cross-country road trip. Northport police are processing that van for evidence. Back on July 2nd, Petito and her boyfriend left New York for a trip out west. They documented their visits to national parks on social media. Petito's mom says communication began to dwindle in late August, and she last spoke with her daughter on August 25th. This past Saturday, family reported her missing to Suffolk County Police. In a statement, an attorney for the Laundry family says, It is our understanding that a search has been organized for Miss Petito in or near Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming. On behalf of the Laundry family, it is our hope that the search for Miss Petito is successful and that Miss Petito is reunited with her family. Gabby's family is holding on to hope she will be found safe and sound. Look at every picture that you're going to see on this screen. Watch the video. Let her face burn it into your memory. Let the way she stands, talks, walks, you know, the holds the peace signs up. She's got to let it be on a forearm. Burn those images into your memory when you're driving down the road or you're hiking a trail. If you think you see her, call a tip line. At this time, police have not charged the boyfriend nor named him a suspect in Gabby Petito's disappearance. The FBI is also involved in this investigation to bring Gabby home. Gabby Petito was on a cross-country road trip with her fiancé, Brian Laundrie, who returned to Florida alone and has reportedly retained a lawyer. In a statement to Fox News, a lawyer for the Laundrie family says a search for Gabby has been organized near or in the Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming. And tonight, Fox 13 News has learned an Ogden business may be able to offer more clues to investigators. Fox 13's John Franke is in Ogden tonight at a site where Petito shared photos on social media. John. Well, guys, the couple shared their travels all over social media. So check out this butterfly mural behind me. It is distinctive. It is vibrant. It also appears in the background of the final post made to Petito's Instagram account some three weeks ago. Now we're all the way in Utah, and luckily enough, I was able to set up my hammock on one of these trees. And we're kind of like in the desert. <laughs> Very few trees. <laughs> a YouTube video shows us Gabby Petito and her fiance Brian Laundry were here in Utah. This is their van driving through the salt flats, and they experience the summer thunderstorms. The tent is just coming in on me. The wind is so bad. That video was uploaded on August 19th, six days before this photo was posted to Gabby's Instagram. The caption reads, Happy Halloween. Today, the Monarch confirmed those photos were taken in front of the store's butterfly mural. A spokesperson confirmed to me the Monarch is searching through their surveillance footage and working with the FBI, looking for any glimpse of the young woman who has seemingly vanished without a trace. At least three times a week, we would FaceTime, call, text frequently. She kept me updated on this whole trip. Her mother and father are agonizing, not knowing where she is. The last time they heard from her was August 25th, the same day these photos were uploaded. I'm a 42 year old grown man begging for your help. Now some of that help is coming from this corner of Ogden. We don't know if the surveillance video will uncover any clues, but it could be one piece of this investigation now focused on the Mountain West. Filed yesterday afternoon, Petito's parents released a new statement that read in part, Brian left Gabby in the wilderness with grizzly bears and wolves while he sits in the comfort of his home. Brian, your silence is reprehensible. 
Petito's stepfather has now traveled to Wyoming to search for her. Laundrie has been in Florida since September 1st. According to police, he and his parents have retained an attorney who issued a statement that Laundrie, on the advice of counsel, is not speaking on the matter. While Gabrielle Petito's colorful Instagram and YouTube posts are being dissected by police. Hello, hello, and good morning. Her family asked this in black and white. How does boyfriend Brian Laundrie stay in the background when he is the one person who knows where Gabrielle is located? Unless you're the parent, you know, you just can't describe how that feeling is because you've never felt it before. And I pray that no one ever feels it again. They were reacting to this statement from Laundrie's attorney that says it is their understanding a search has been organized in or near the Grand Tetons and that on behalf of the Laundrie family, it is our hope it is successful and that she is reunited with her family. Police towed the van they were in from a home owned by Laundrie's family in Northport this weekend. Brian was at home, but police say refused to talk. Police were back in the neighborhood today, but didn't go into the laundry's house. You had someone who was in constant communication with their family on a pretty regular basis, and then all of a sudden, nothing. Then all of a sudden, the person she was traveling with is back here, and she's not here. That person's unwilling to talk with us to this point. Gabby's family says they want immediate answers to where he last saw her and why he apparently left her all alone. They say he had referred to her as the love of his life. What we need is to bring Gabby home and find her. Um, so please, everyone, if you can look at the picture, memorize her face, and just keep a lookout, and let us know if you see anything. Thanks, Scott. Fox 13 News has confirmed a new development in the case of missing 22-year-old Gabby Petito. A family spokesperson says Gabby was last seen alive at the Fairfield Inn and Suites on Admiral Bird Road on August 24th. That hotel is just west of the Salt Lake City International Airport, and we went there last night. Staff wouldn't speak to us on camera, but they did say the FBI and police officers have visited the hotel recently. They also tell us Gabby stayed there for more than a day. And this morning, we're also learning more about an interaction Gabby and Brian Laundrie had with Moab police. A police report indicates it happened on August 12th. A bystander saw a fight between the two and called police. Fox 13's John Franke explains what's in that report. Is four pages long. No criminal charges were filed through this, but it gives us a glimpse into the couple's relationship in the days before Gabby vanished. This is the police report. Two officers responded to what's described as a domestic problem near the Moonflower Co-op in downtown Moab. One officer wrote, It wasn't clear, but I believe it was reported the male had been observed to have assaulted the female. Officers spotted the couple's van near the entrance to Arches National Park. They were clocked driving 30 miles per hour over the speed limit. When the couple stopped, an argument took place. One officer wrote, The male tried to create distance by telling Gabby to go take a walk and calm down. She didn't want to be separated from the male and began slapping him. He grabbed her face and pushed her back. The other officer who interviewed Brian wrote, Brian said Gabrielle, thinking he was going to leave her in Moab without a ride, went to slap him. As Gabrielle started to swing, Brian pushed her away to avoid the slap. They also described Gabby's demeanor, saying at no point did Gabby stop crying, breathing heavily, or compose a sentence without needing to wipe away tears. They added, Brian did not show any signs he may be a victim of battered boyfriend syndrome. The officers helped Brian get a hotel room for the night. Gabby took the van. Officers described the incident as a mental health crisis and not domestic assault. The police report indicates there is body camera footage of the interaction officers had with the couple. We have A social media posting, a posting on Twitter from Chief Do Todd Garrison of the Norport Police Department. Now, Chief down here is very active on Twitter, and he just put out his own plea, calling on Brian Laundrie's family's attorney, Stephen Bertolino, to help find Gabby. He says, quote, please call us to arrange a conversation with Brian Laundrie. Two people left on a trip, and one person returned. And really, tonight, that's all that anybody wants to do. They want to find Gabby Patino. 
It was supposed to be the trip of a lifetime. Gabby Petito never goes outside. As 22-year-old Gabby Petito and her boyfriend, 23-year-old Brian Laundry, set out across the country in this van documenting their trip and experiences. But it's become a mystery, and Norport police want to solve it. We're doing everything we can to bring her home safely or potentially hold anybody responsible uh, for hurting her accountable. Gabby Petito's family last heard from her at the end of August. They believe she was in Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming. As communication from Gabby went silent, Norport police say Brian Laundry returned home to Norport without Gabby on September 1st. Ten days later, after being unable to reach her, family members in New York reported her missing. We are concerned and uh, we're working as quick as we can. As Norport police investigate, details from an incident involving the couple in Moab, Utah have been released. On August 12th, a witness reported a domestic problem between parties identified as Gabby and Brian. Brian told officers time spent together on their journey created an emotional strain between the pair and increased their arguments. According to the report, Gabby went into a manic state, fearing he would leave her behind and slapped him. Officers separated the pair for the night and no charges were filed. 13 days later, Gabby would go silent and Brian and his family would lawyer up. I think we're just pleading with him at this point to please speak with us. We need to understand those details. You know, they put out a release yesterday saying they remain in the background. That is not good enough. We need the details. Let's take you now to Northport, Florida, where officials are holding a press conference on the disappearance of Gabby Petito, who went missing on a cross-country trip with her fiancé. Let's listen. ...reported missing on September 11th, 2001. In June of 2021, Gabby and her fiancé embarked on a cross-country trip with plans to travel across the West Coast and visit state national parks in the western United States. They were traveling in Gabby's 2012 white Ford van and documented their journey on YouTube and social media. We have a picture of the white Ford van that they were traveling in. She maintained regular contact with her family members during her travels. However, that communication abruptly stopped around the end of August. Gabby is a vibrant 22 year old with a love for life and adventure. She's a daughter, a sister, and a granddaughter. She was excited to share her cross country trek with others on social media and with her family. Gabby's family and those in the community here and in New York who know and care for her are hoping for answers about her whereabouts. We have investigators working diligently around the clock as well as with the FBI. The FBI is present here today to show their solidarity and commitment to this investigation. And we are grateful for all their resources due to the uh, geographic scope of the investigation, uh, it's important that we partner with our federal and local partners. At this time, I'm going to allow Joe, Gabby's dad, to come up and say a few words. All right, what I need from everybody here is help because the, the goal is still not met, and that goal is to bring Gabby home safe. All right, and uh, I'm asking for help from everyone here. I'm asking for help everyone at home. I'm asking for help from the parents of, uh, of Brian. And I'm asking for help of the family members and friends of the Laundry family as well. You know, there is a tip line that you can call anonymously. Whatever you can do to make sure my daughter comes home, I'm asking for that help. There's nothing else that matters to me now. This. This girl right here, this is what matters. That is it. Anything else, it comes second to this. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Our focus is to finding Gabby. And we are pleading with people out there to give us information, point us in the direction that we need to be, and help us find Gabby. Gabby and her family deserve that. Right now, I'll go ahead and ask, answer a few questions that I can. Go ahead. Yesterday, you reached out on Twitter to one who reported any burglary in the house. I have not. Is there a criminality suspected in the case, or is it just a missing person? Right now, we are investigating a missing person case. So, have criminality suspected? 
Uh, not, not at this time. Right now, it's a pr uh, missing person case. See, how frustrating is it knowing that the family lives just a short distance away from the police department here? I'm sure your officers have to drive by and talk, and you know that police hasn't given you any solution. Well, we share the frustration with, with the world right now. So, you know, two people went on a trip, one person returned, and that person that returned isn't providing us any information. Chief, can you bring Brian Laundry in for hindering the investigation or for stealing Gavin's car? Right now, no. Have you guys learned anything from the van or from the phones at all? Right now, we're still analyzing all that data, which takes time to forensically uh, analyze all that. Is the body cam video out of the lab? Is that offering any sort of insight into what potentially happened? Are you using that as part of your investigation? We, we look at everything that's coming in. Um, as far as that head of having to do anything with the disappearance, we don't know. I mean, yes, they had a disturbance. Yes, it was captured on uh, body camera, their interaction with law enforcement. But beyond that, you know, I don't know what it has to do with the disappearance. Do you guys know uh, when exactly Brian left and headed for Florida? We know he came here on the 1st, but do you know when he went, left from the West Coast, and if there's any indication that Gabby was with him on that trek back? Right now we're analyzing that data, um, so we don't have that timeline narrowed down. Um, there's a lot of information that we have to go through. Do you know where Brian Laundry is right now? Yes. Uh, the family attorney arranged uh, to get us some property that we were looking for, um, and beyond that, no. Did you make out that they last spoke with her daughter on August 30th, or at least someone was purporting to be her daughter? Has any forensic been done on her phone? Has the phone records been requested? Have they been provided? Everything is being forensically uh, analyzed right now, and it, it takes time. Including Nicole's phone? We, no, we don't have Nicole's phone. And have you requested it? We requested from who? From her. Oh, I'm sorry, from Nicole's phone. I'm sorry. Um, I, I don't have the answer to that as far as uh, uh, that. Are this part of the investigation is Wyoming still the last place that she's known to be? Right now, it, it seems to be the area of, that we're looking at. What would it take in your investigation to find out? Right now, this is a missing person case, all right? And our focus is to find Gabby. My focus isn't to bring Brian in right now, it's to find Gabby. Brian is exercising his uh, constitutional rights, and I have to respect that. Um, but as of right now, um, the focus is finding Gabby. Well, she's been missing for two weeks, and she's possibly being in danger. Why don't you get the prisoner to tell you no, and he's not coming in to speak to you? because the Constitution protects that. Where are search teams working currently? And are they law enforcement-led search teams? We have no physical search teams on the ground like doing grid search right now. Uh, we have resources and law enforcement partners that are out in the field following up tips and leads. Uh, but as far as a grid search right now, we're still trying to narrow down uh, geographic areas. And do we know the exact date and exact like confirmed location that she was? We're still in the There's been it. like some say Salt Lake City, some say the National Park. Any you know, the information, is, there's a lot of information coming through. We have to analyze that information. We have to vet that information, and it takes time. But is there any history of police interacting with Brian here in Northport or any incident involving Brian and Gabby here in Northport before they went on the trip and they've been here a couple years now? No. Was she on any kind of medication? Not that I know of. And was Northport Police aware of her mental health issues before the Mall report came out? I'm not I'm not aware of any of them. Are you able to tell us what you found in the van? I mean, yesterday you said you were not. No, right now the, the, the data, the stuff that we found in the, in the van is being analyzed. Uh, I don't know if it has any evidentiary value to it or not. Obviously, this was a van used by the both of them, uh, which personal belongings and stuff are in there. Whether or not it has anything to do with the case, we don't know. I know you tweeted at the attorney. How frustrating is this for you personally? I want to bring Gabby home, you know. So, of course it's frustrating. And he answered us. We asked him about your tweet, and he said no comment. Your response Where's Gabby? That's my response. No, emotionally for you, as a father, as a human being, you know, talk about what this case is for for you. This isn't about me. This is about Gabby, and that's where I want to keep the focus. No, I know, but, you know, just looking at her face, talking with her, her family, how, how is this, does that, you know, is there any response from you to... Well, it, it, it's driving us to keep working. I mean, long hours, long days, 
um, it, it gives us the momentum to keep going forward. Have any of the social media platforms reached out to your agency as part of the investigation and offered up any of the metadata? We have great um, cooperation with the social media platforms out there. How difficult is it as you guys are here, she possibly went missing over there, you know, geographically speaking, how difficult is that for the investigation? We have uh, partners federally and, and locally that, that we can reach out and touch. Um, one of the reasons of asking the assistance of the FBI to come in is they have a long-reaching arm. Um, so I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm confident with what we're doing here and the tips and the information that's being funneled out west. I'm, I'm confident that that system is moving uh, effectively. Two more, two more questions. The Cedar family said yesterday that what happened in Wyoming happened. It indicates that they know that something did occur in Wyoming and that there's information that we're not aware of or that's not being given to us and they can see the calls from me. Do you know what happened in Wyoming? Do you know what they meant? The fact of the matter is, Gabby is missing, and I think that that's what they're referring to. Of course, well, Gabby's you know, missing. this is a huge investigation. You have internet press from all across the country here, and if there's something that's part of the story that's not being told, I think you know the public has a duty to you're, understand You're You're looking into something that's not there. I think what the family's position on it was, she went missing. The last area was out in Wyoming. So she's not here, so where is she? Now, Utah police aren't ruling out, it's really tough to talk about, but they're not ruling out any connection to a possible homicide that happened there as well. Have you guys looked into that? Is there anything you can tell us in relation to that? We have communication going back and forth with the uh, Grand County Sheriff's Office. Um, we provided them with whatever information we could. Uh, they don't have any suspect information right now, so you would have to refer that to them, but they told us that they're looking at, at everything at this point. Kim, one last question. Right now, no. Right now, all we have is the missing person investigation on that. Okay. Really simple question. You said you know where Brian is. Is he at his parents' house? All I'm going to say is I know where Brian's at. All right. Thank, Thank you, you guys. You can certainly